hello there. So this is my um, my Raspberry Pi project. Uh, it's basically a typical Raspberry Pi model B, the old first generation style. This actually I think is a what is it called a B plus or B reversion revision two. It just has more memory. But anyways, um, so. Basically, I have this uh, little LCD screen connected to it, and I have um, one of these DHT22 sensors hooked up to it. So basically, uh, what this is doing is it's currently showing um, all sorts of data that I gather from various sensors around my house, and it's displaying it here on this LCD so I can just easily glance at it. I'm in my living room, so if I'm sitting here uh, watching TV or whatever, I can glance over. Of course, it has the time. Um, it has the outside temperature, which um, I have a, an Arduino in my um, garage, and there's a sensor that sticks outside on the north side so that the sun doesn't shine on it. So that's the outside temperature right now. And then I just recently added this DHT sensor here, which a separate Python script on the Pi is actually logging the data to the Splunk server. And then um, Obviously, there's an indoor temperature, the temperature and the humidity. And then what happens is the, the software that's running this, I'm using Pygame, so it's Python, and there's game libraries, which basically let you write to the frame buffer on Linux. Well, this LCD is using uh, the libraries that basically turn it into a frame buffer. It's an SPI screen. And uh, so using Pygame, I actually do these graphics here. So... Um, what happens is it queries um, my server, which returns like a CSV basically of this data out of Splunk. So we have outside temperature, we have the minimum and maximum temperature outside in the last uh, 24 hours. Hopefully this is in focus, if not, I apologize. So basically a rolling 24 hour um, average. And then we have the current temperature in the attic and the current temperature inside my garage. And of course that's the outside temperature outside the garage and then we have the inside and uh, temperature and humidity and that's measured by this. So even though I'm measuring the temperature on the Pi, it does not go from this sensor to the screen, it actually goes to Splunk and then this data, all of it's returned with the query. So anyways, um, and then uh, the screen is just sort of hot glued <laughs> on here. So, um, you know, Pretty, pretty solidly connected there. Um, I keep it on this uh, metal coaster because actually the Pi generates a little bit of warmth and I don't like the heat on top of this um, piece of furniture. This is antique, so. And then, um, yeah, I just sort of have these the other sensor line here has just to keep it away from the Pi. Oh, and I'm using one of these very inexpensive Wi-Fi dongles. I think I paid $2.50 for it. Um, it's a Realtek whatever. And um, yeah, I mean, I think the only thing that's happened is this Pi, which I've had for quite a few years now, um, the SD card slot actually failed. It sort of cracked and started coming apart. And in fact, the SD card itself failed. This first generation design, I'll just show there, um, is just, is not a very good design actually. And um, the contacts put a lot of pressure on the card and the slot doesn't really hold the center part of the card. So the card eventually bowed and corrupted and, and damaged everything. So the only way this is actually working now is to see that little rubber, uh, that kind of light gray rubber, that's jammed in between the case and the slot. And that's actually holding the card in. Otherwise, um, because the, the, the support on the card used to be on the sides and it's now broken on one side. So without that rubber piece, the card just sort of flops right out and doesn't stay in. And then, um, I'm also, you can't really tell, but it's some scotch tape kind of holding the card in because even with that rubber piece there, you just jostle it and the card pops right out. And then, and it sucks is what had happened. The other card, it failed and it basically completely corrupted the operating system. And what really freaked me out is I had written the software, the Python scripts that do this display stuff. And um, I wasn't sure I had a backup copy of that originally. So... I panicked for a little bit, but I found a copy. And now I'm very careful that when I write the Python scripts that say run the screen in the sensor here, I back them up onto my server 
or under Google Google Drive actually. So in case this happens, this this fails again, and I had to rebuild the OS from scratch. Uh, you know, I'm using the regular like mini Raspbian. It's the version. It's called Mini because it doesn't have uh, X Windows on it, and you can put it on smaller cards. Like that's a four gig. It actually fits on a two gig. But um, the problem is, you know, you have to do a lot of stuff to get the LCD working. And I had never documented those uh, instructions. So now I have. So if I have to rebuild this again, no problem. But anyways, yeah, so this was a slightly different configuration earlier today. I had the this outside temperature much bigger. And then so I've added the inside stuff and I redid it. And, you know, it's not the most elegant. But the most important thing is I can sit in my chair watching TV, glance over at this, and I can right away see what the temperature is uh, outside. Just adjust this. And I can now see the inside humidity and temperature. So now that these DHC sensors are great, and of course the Pi Zeros are dirt cheap, I need to get myself some of those. I think I'm gonna replace some of my Arduino boards with Pis because I like the whole idea of being able to kind of program them on the fly instead of having to bring them inside the house to do it. And I think I'm going to switch to these DHCs. I guess I could keep the Arduino though because it has a ethernet shield and syslog and stuff. But I'd like to start gathering the humidity like in my attic, in the garage, outside, stuff like that. Just have a bit more data to display. And of course the screen is quite full, so I don't know. But anyway, so that's my little pie project. Um, you know, it's doing something useful, one of these pies. It's pretty cool. Oh, and just as a side note, I had tried to use Arduino to do this. Of course, you can easily drive this screen with Arduino, but it's just not easy. The screen update rate is very slow with the Arduino. And the fonts are horrible. And of course, this is using the Pi game, like I said, which has nice, like, true type fonts, you know, scalable, everything. It's just easy to do. It's super fast. The refresh rate, if I recall, you get about 15 frames per second, at least on this first generation Pi with this screen, which is not bad. Oh, and I'm driving the backlight using PWM. So um, it uses a cron job, will automatically dim the screen. In fact, it would be great if I actually put a light sensor and you know, maybe that's my next add-on is do put a light sensor on there but for now um you know it just does it based on the time so at night the screen is much much dimmer so it's not so bright and in the day it brightens up you know things like that so anyways there you go thanks for watching bye oops that was the wrong button to push try again